Morning everyone. Morning. I'm doing something for the first time today. I'm going to do a five part series and today is the intro to that five part series which is one of the five parts but it's the introduction today. And it's called, the overall series is called, Is God Really Worth It? And the five part series of the lessons we'll be looking at is it really worth being a follower of Jesus Christ? And today's introduction to the series is entitled, What is God's Will for My Life? Amen. Question to ask yourself. Have you ever asked that question yourself? What is God's will for my life? Have you ever stopped and just meditated on that for a little while? If you have, you may think, he never promised me my life would be like a rose garden. All wonderful smells and sights of the beautiful roses. He never promised me perfect health or that I would not suffer. He did not promise I would become rich on this earth, have freedom to worship him, hurt from agony that is brought upon us. He still lets us fail at things, and we don't succeed all the time. If you want to stop for a second, what you see is the following. We see evil prospering around us all the time. You see, seem to see God shrinking out of existence in our country. You struggle and fall from day to day it sometimes feels like you're hanging on by that last thread. Someone once said, when you're at the very end of the rope, tie a knot in it and hang on harder. And it seems like the harder you try, the harder the rope becomes. There's always potholes, and I'm talking about those big northeastern Ohio potholes that you can land a 747 in and you'll never see it again. <laughs> or stones. Have you ever walked up a freshly stoned road with those big gigantic limestones? It's hard to walk. You slip and you're going up the hill, you fall backwards and you're clinging for it. And then right, right when you think you're okay, there comes this boulder right in front of you. And it has all these sharp edges and you have to reach your hand out and grab it and try to crawl over it. But then, to the left, you see this smooth pavement. You know what kind of pavement I am. Isn't it amazing after a highway is done on the road and you just hit that smooth pavement and the car starts, <laughs> it just evens out, it's nice. Life seems to be working out so much better for the people on that other road. So you change your path. You reach the summit and walk on smooth, even ground. And you say, all right, God, I'm your loyal servant. I'm a good person. I'm not too greedy. I tried to serve you without hurting too many people. I'm so happy you showed me this way to go. On the smooth road, trouble-free, what a relaxing trip this is and smooth sailing, as some would say. You see clearly now all things are great. Then the bottom falls out, and you fall harder than you ever could have on the other road. Then you stop and you say, that was my perfect will on that road, what happened. I was all wonderful, now it is all messed up and I'm unable to climb out of this hole at all that I'm in. You stop and then you realize that's my will for my life. That's not God's will for my life. That brings us back to the original question. What is God's will for my life? Jeremiah 29:11 says, For I know the, the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. 
God has a perfect plan for us. It may not always be smooth, but God has the perfect plan for us. In Philippians 2, 12 and 13, that's Philippians 2, Sorry, I went to five demons. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own faith salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. God has a plan for us to be the same in all circumstances. Working on our salvation, not coasting along. God is pushing you along for him. He takes great pleasure in seeing you call for that salvation and having that desire for that salvation. Seeing you work for that salvation. Coasting along brings God no pleasure. He wants you to be working for your salvation. And he takes great pleasure in that. Psalms 143.10 says, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprighteousness. He wants us to be students. God does to learn his will and to allow him to lead us you ask yourself okay I'm beginning to understand that you want us to desire you so much that we want to fight to get to know you we want to please you and we want you to teach us and lead us then why then we ask why do you want all of this 1 Peter 2, 15 and 16. 1 Peter 2, 15 and 16. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free yet using, not using liberty as a cloak or vice, but as a bondservant of God. He wants us to be better able to be better able to be better servants to him able to freely to defend his word and silence those that oppose it but he wants us to do it humbly and in servitude to him psalm 73 You know they write a lot of books and songs. Psalm 73, 23 and 24. Nevertheless, I'm continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. God wants us to rely on him reach for his hand to pull us up and allow his counsel to guide us that's god's will for us he wants his counsel to guide us first john 5 14 now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us he wants us to know that after we accept his will, we have the right to ask him for anything that's in it. Isn't that amazing? Think about it. If we accept his will and it's within God's will, he will give that to us. All we have to do is ask. That's totally to me amazing to me. If we think about that, accepting God's will and his guidance, teaching and counseling, then what? 
Well, if we turn over to Romans 12.1, it tells us. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Read that again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He's telling our, us that our reasonable service is to be holy and acceptable to him. That's his will. He's not, is that unreasonable? Obviously not, because God says that is our reasonable service. So we decide that we'll do as God has asked, as us in Romans 12:1 to be right and to be a reasonable service to him, then what will happen? Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. We no longer allow this world to shape us. We always talk about God either using it as a chisel and chiseling this off, or molding us like clay well guess what the world is doing it's molding us also right. and now when we do this and we accept God's will God takes over and he starts molding us and he starts with our mind where does he need to what does he need to change right away we always say it's the heart but the heart is right here it's in your, it's in your mind we, he starts changing our mind, starts conforming it to what he is acceptable to him and the perfect will of God to him. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and those are the only three ways you can sin, is not of the Father, but of this world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides you forever. God, as he's changing us and forming us, from Romans 12 to, is forming our minds in to looking at things beyond what is right in front of us. He makes the focus clearer. He says, look farther. Don't look right there. Look farther. Things become clearer on that. Then things become not of things of this decaying world, but things that are to come. We need to really, that's the main part of changing our mind. After all this happens in our lives, we accept his guidance, his counsel, his teaching, his will over ours. We figure it out. We learn that our ideas, our plans, will no longer come first. Then what happens? Well, this is really nice. We look at Ephesians 10, 6.10. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and his power of his, and, and in the power of his might. God makes us stronger. More strength than we could ever have. You know those potholes? We can go through them. It doesn't stop us. Those boulders, we can go over them. And we realize that it's not that bad. If we all go back to Isaiah 26, 4. Trust in the Lord forever, for Yah the Lord is everlasting strength, for he brings down those who dwell 
Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I want to stay at is everlasting strength. Now, I want to look here for one second because other versions say, Trust in the Lord for you all. The Lord is the rock of ages. We come to realize that God is not only our present strength, but our everlasting strength if we accept his will. And now we've done that, we become stronger. And if we look at 1 Timothy, First Timothy six six. Now godliness will with contentment is a great gain. We no longer are looking at this world. We're no longer focusing on this world. We're focusing on God. We found what we've been looking for. We found contentment in God. And that is so wonderful. The conclusion to this first part of the five part series is this. The road that God has chosen for you, accept it and walk it because it is perfect. You will find God's will in life is worth it. I want to leave you with two last scriptures this morning important scriptures might be the two most that I read today trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path Proverbs 3 5 and 6 the second we put away our own understanding and our own will and allow God to be our leader our guidance our counselor the one that takes care of our lives, the sooner our lives will be better. If there's anything we can do for you today, please come as we stand and sing.